So far, we have investigated continuous mixtures of logit, where the mixing distribution is continuous. We have mainly used normal distributions, and in one example, we had a log normal distribution. In this video, we investigate discrete mixtures, where the mixing distribution is discrete. Such models are sometimes called latent class models. In the previous video, we have investigated a case study where the coefficient of the travel time parameter in a mode choice model was assumed to be distributed across the population. And we investigated two continuous distributions, a normal distribution and a log normal distribution. If you look at the log normal distribution, we have a very big value of the PDF associated with values which are close to zero. The data that we have used comes from a stated preference survey where people had to respond to a questionnaire that was describing hypothetical choice situations and we had to select one alternative. Well, this is not necessarily easy to respond to these questionnaires. And in particular, there may be a fatigue effect and respondents may actually omit to take into account some of the variables that are presented to them. But maybe this is what we are capturing here. So suppose that some respondents just ignore the travel time. Let's say that they looked only at the, at the cost, for example. Well, these people would have a coefficient, which is zero, because they ignore the travel time. And this may be what the log normal distribution is capturing here. But the problem with the log normal distribution is that if you have a lot of people that are close to zero, well, it has to be compensated by people who are in the tail of the distribution. And this is what we will try to relax by using a discrete distribution. So this is the scenario that I will investigate now. Because I have stated preference data, I suspect that some respondents did not play the game correctly. And the assumption that I would like to test is that some people have ignored the travel time variable to make the choice. If we know who they are, we should impose beta time equals to zero for them. But who are they? We don't know, because they didn't tell us. Okay, so we have two classes in the population that we assume. Class one is the class of respondents who consider travel time. And for these people, we need to estimate beta t. And class two are the respondents who did not take into account travel time. And for these people, we should impose beta t to be equal to zero. Let's look at the specification of the model for each of these two classes. Class one are the respondents who considered travel time. So we have the three alternatives like before. We have the two constants, the cost and the frequency variable. And now we have here the time coefficient, which is generic. Indeed, we are in class one, people consider travel time, so this term must be included. In class two, the respondents did not consider travel time. So basically, we duplicate the same specification, but we omit the time variable here. So we assume that these people took into account only the cost and the frequency to make the decision. Let's assume that each of these two models are, are logit models. So I have a logit model for class one and another logit model for class two with two different specifications. So let's try to put them together. The two models that we have introduced in the previous slide are class specific models. We have a model that predicts the choice probability conditional to the fact that the decision maker is in class one, meaning that decision makers takes into account the travel time variable. And another logit model that predicts the choice probability conditional to the fact that the decision maker belongs to class two, meaning that the decision maker does not take into account travel time to make the choice. But what we need is the choice model, is the probability to choose the car. And we'll have to mix the two models described above. So we have the probability of the car given that n is in class one, we have the probability of the car given that n is in class two. And now we have to mix them. What I will do, I will write this probability of car as the probability of car given that n is a member of class one 
times the probability that n belongs to class 1 plus the probability to choose car given that n is in class 2 times the probability that n is in class 2. These models are the logic models that we have introduced before, and these are the mixing parameters. And here the mixing parameters are weights, so we have two of them, so, and we associate a discrete distribution with them, which is the probability to be in class 2 and the probability to be in class 1. This model is called a class membership model. So a class membership model predicts or tries to predict the membership of a given individual to one of the two classes that we have defined. Let's take a very simple example. Let's say that this is just a parameter, this probability. So I will write the probability to be in class 1 as equal to, let's say, omega. It's an unknown parameter that I will have to estimate from data. And the probability then to be in class 2 well, is simply equal to 1 minus omega. Okay, so here the weights of the convex combination for the mixtures are omega on the one hand and 1 minus omega on the other hand, and it's a proper probability distribution. This model is a mixture of logit, but it is a discrete mixture of logit. And there is a big advantage here, is that we have no integral. Okay, so this model has a closed form, which is, a, which is an advantage. There is no free lunch though, so this is definitely easier to estimate than a continuous mixture. But when you use latent classes, the shape of the likelihood function exhibits a lot of local maxima. And this is quite difficult for an optimization algorithm to identify the global maximum of this log likelihood function. So it's just a parenthesis that this looks way simpler than a continuous mixture. And it, it is indeed the case because we have a closed for formula for the choice model. But you need to be careful not to overuse it because of the shape of the likelihood function. In this slide, I have recycled the results from the previous video where we have estimated a logit model, a random coefficient model with a normal distribution that we rejected, a random coefficient model with log normal distribution, which gave us this idea that maybe some people in the population didn't play the game correctly and were associated with a zero beta time. And this was the motivation to develop the latent class model. There are several comments to make about the results, the estimation result of this model. First, we got the best log likelihood so far, so the best fit so far. Then, all the parameters here are actually quite similar to the one we obtained with the normal distribution here. But we rejected the normal distribution because we had a significant portion of the population with a positive beta coefficient. It's not the case here. So here, with the latent class model, we have 75% of the population associated with a beta coefficient, which is minus 281. And the rest of the population, as we have designed the model, belongs to class 2, so the beta t is equal to 0. So this is a model that I like because I have a fit which is better than even the random coefficient with normal distribution. Interestingly, the parameters look similar, but now I don't have any more this problem that a significant part of the population has a positive value of beta. And what these results tell me is that 25% of the population or of the sample basically ignore the time coefficient when they did the exercise. And this is important to know. So let's continue our investigation of latent class models by making the class membership model a little bit more sophisticated. Remember in this specification, the probability to be in class one was a parameter, omega, that we have estimated. Here it's equal to 74.9%. Let's try to be a little bit more sophisticated. So I have the same setup as before. I have for each class a choice model. So class one with travel time, class two without travel time. 
And I have a mixture. So the mixture has, is the logit model times the class membership model for class one, plus the second choice model times the class membership model for class two. And here I propose another specification for the class membership model. Instead of using a simple parameter like we did in the previous example, I would like the probability to be in a class to depend on socioeconomic characteristics. And that's what I've specified here. I have defined omega now to be a function of several variables. The sex, the GA is the general abandonment, it's the fact that people own a yearly subscription to public transportation. Is the trip a business trip or not? We have a low income indicator and we have a first class indicator for people traveling in public transportation. Now, this is of course not a probability model, W expressed as such. So we have to plug it into a function that makes it a probability model. And now the class membership probability depends on socioeconomic characteristics. In the previous model, the probability to belong to class one was the same for everybody. Everybody had a probability of 74.9%. And now with this new model, the probability to be in class one depends on the value of the socioeconomic characteristics that we have included. So sex, general abandonment, business, low income, and first class. And you can see that for some of them, we have a very small probability to be in class one. And for some of them, we have a very high probability to be in class one. This model is more detailed. Okay, we have a better description of the class membership than we had in the previous one. Okay, so what did I do so far? I have investigated the fact that the beta travel time was distributed in the population. And there are signs that it is the case. During my analysis, I realized that maybe some people did not take into account travel time. And therefore, the beta should be equal to zero. And we have evidence that it is the case. But let's go back to class one now, people who actually cared about travel time. So maybe the time coefficient is distributed within this class. So now we will combine the two. We will have a latent class model that is based on the discrete mixtures of models. And within the class, we will have a continuous mixtures of models to capture the fact that the beta coefficient is distributed. Okay, so let's put everything together. Let's summarize the specification of this more complex model where we have a latent class model and within a class, we have a mixtures of logic. Again, we have two classes and we have a choice model per class. So this is the probability to choose car given that individual is in class two. There we use the logit model that we have used before. For the choice model within class one, we will assume the specification that we have seen, but we will assume that the beta parameter is distributed. And we will assume a normal distribution. Then the choice model is given by the discrete mixtures. So it's not a discrete mixture of logit now, but it doesn't matter. So here I have a model which is a continuous mixture of logit. Here I have a model which is a logit model. And I combine the two using a discrete mixture using this class membership model. And I'm using the same class membership model that we have seen in the previous example. So this example that I'm investigating here shows this idea of building blocks that I put together. You see, so I had logit models, okay? I put them together using a continuous mixture, and I assume that this model belongs to one class, okay? And then I take the two classes and I put them together using a discrete mixture, okay? And you can, you know, have access to a lot of sophistication using these building blocks. So this illustration becomes quite a little bit busy, but I have superimposed the results of this new model with the one that we had before, that we have investigated in the previous video. And you see that here I've plotted the distribution of the beta coefficient 
within class one, so within the class of people who care about the travel time. Remember, I told you that a normal distribution has an infinite support. So, of course, by design, the probability to have a positive value is always non-zero. But if you look at this picture, you can see that the probability to be positive is extremely small and somehow negligible. So if I decide to truncate the beta distribution at zero, I, I will not modify a lot the model. So this is acceptable. Okay, I'm ready to accept a model where the normal distribution has most of this support in the negative number. I have estimated plenty of models, so five models actually. So now which one should I prefer? Well, what I will do is that I will apply a likelihood ratio test because each model is an extension of the previous one. Okay, so I can use likelihood ratio to test which model is the best. So we started with a logit model, a simple logit model with five parameters, two constants, the cost, the time, and the frequency coefficients. Then we, we assumed that the beta time was normally distributed. So instead of one coefficient for beta time, we had two coefficients to estimate, so we had six parameters. We rejected that model because we had a significant portion of the population with a positive beta t. Therefore, we changed the assumption about the distribution. We assumed that beta t was log normal. Of course, the number of parameters is the same, this is six. Then we investigated a latent class model where we had one class of people with beta t which is fixed, that we have estimated, and another class where beta t is equal to zero. We have five parameters for the logit model, and we have six parameters for the class membership model. So we have 11 parameters. And finally, we have said, aha, but maybe in class one, beta t is actually distributed. So this is what we have done here. We had the latent class that we had before, but instead of having beta t fixed, we have beta t distributed. So we have another parameter, which makes it 12. So it's relatively easy to see here that the two candidates to be the best models are these two here. They have a significantly improved log likelihood for the extra parameters. You can make the test explicitly, but what I will do on this slide is make the test between these two, because as you can see, the log likelihood is relatively similar, and there is only one more parameter. So let's do the test. The likelihood ratio test is minus two times the difference between the two log likelihood, that is here, and this is equal to 1.952. So it means that at the 90% level, I cannot reject the hypothesis that the two models are equivalent. In this case, I will prefer the most parsimonious model, which is this one. So the conclusion among all the models that I have tested, I will prefer a latent class model with a fixed coefficient for travel time for class one. So we have seen that mixtures of models can capture an observed heterogeneity. And latent classes do the same as well, but using a discrete segmentation of the population instead of a continuous one. And you can actually define classes to represent different specification of the model. So you may have different classes with different choice sets, or maybe different decision protocols. This is basically what we have investigated, right? So some people use travel times, some people didn't use travel time. So we had different protocols. You may associate the classes with different test parameters. You may even associate the classes with different model structures. One class is with nested logit, and one class with cross-nested logit, and so on. So again, this is a very flexible toolbox to allow you to test a lot of specifications and a lot of behavioral assumptions. So this is the general specification of a model structure. So I have here the choice model, which depends on the attributes, the socioeconomic characteristics, and the choice set. And the latent class model is based on the assumption that they are here capital S classes in the population. Each class as a class-specific choice model that depends on all the variables, but it, which may be different for each class. And then we have a class membership model, which may depend on the socioeconomic characteristics, Zn. 
In this video, we have seen that discrete mixtures of logit are also possible. They can be used namely to model latent classes in the population. They do not involve an integral, and therefore they do not require Monte Carlo simulation. However, as I mentioned earlier, the likelihood function may exhibit several local optima, and standard optimization algorithms are likely to converge towards local optima and miss the global one. So this is something to care about when you use latent classes. A recommendation would be to limit yourself to two classes. This is easier to estimate. 